and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Gruel Henge, our last deck of the day. Another cool looking donation deck. We are being uh, aggressive here with Gruel where we are playing the Great Henge in our Gruel deck. Um, I really like Cavalier Flame. Talked about this card quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I think Cavalier Flame is a really good way to, to play the Great Henge also. Um, and of course with the Great Henge you can play a longer game and you get more mana and um, more creatures. And of course, if you have more mana, more creatures, you do not have more problems. You have more haste stuff. There we go. You get to use that first ability, give your creatures haste, get to kill your opponent pretty quickly with that. Um, so yeah, besides that, we got lots of two drops, especially lots of uh, two drops that you can play with two green mana. So whenever we play Great Henge, we can immediately drop any of these things. Um, we also have kind of a 1-1 one, one counter synergy, uh, or like sub theme going on here with Grum Gully, adding, having our creatures add, uh, get additional 1-1 one, one counters also. So like Growth Chamber Guardians, they can enter with 1-1 one, one counters, so they can immediately go get new Growth Chamber Guardians in there. And then, uh, Incubation Druid, of course, with Incubation Druid getting the 1-1 one, one counter, now it can tap and add 3 mana. So we can turbo charge out Great Henge also that way by just adding a lot of mana. Um, and then, of course, when we have extra mana, that's good for like our Cavalier of Flames as well. Um, so, yeah, this looks pretty cool. It's a different one. Let's go. So our deck goes crazy fast. All right. I like to hear that. So we're going to play through a league. Let's see if we can get the five win dream. We Got to, uh, we did not get to five wins earlier, but we we uh, got to fight to the final boss twice earlier uh, with Orzhov Value. Let's see if we can get back there with Gruel Henge. Here we go. Yeah, Incubation Druid just gets us a lot more mana again. Um, yeah, you know, so we can cast even more creatures, draw more cards, keep cycling through stuff. The house plant. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Louise. Okay, I'm gonna keep this. Vivian is just such a powerful card. I like turn three Vivian. Um, you know, Vivian could put the counters on the Incubation Druid so it can start adding more mana as well. I kind of would have actually... So I was kind of... Hmm. Yeah, I was planning on playing Rugged Highlands, but actually, I'm going to go Fable Passage because I want to just take a land out of the deck. This is just a 24 land deck. Yeah, let's take a land out. We can still cast Vivian next turn. We'll still have triple green for that. And, you know, I want to get the red source. So we have triple red for uh, that card right there. Cavalier Flame. My heart beats in unison with the wild. I hope my opponent does not I have, like, Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker would be bad. No. That's bad. Anger only gets me so far. Okay, so we get to just slam the great henge. Wow. Wow. New cards. Uh, 
Okay. Got there. Awesome. Opponent had a couple of good turns, but we had some better ones. With the Great Henge Cavalier Flame combo. I don't know if I actually sideboard. I guess Ceratops can kind of tussle better than Grum Gully, but Grum Gully kind of helps the rest of the deck. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> the great rhythm of the Wild Henge. <laughs> For a Rhythm of the Wild Great Henge deck. If we, if we put Henge plus Rhythm of the Wild together... I like it, so the great rhythm of the wild henge. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good uh title right there. It's a, yeah, that does sound crazy. Crazy awesome. I should have played Fable Passage here and cracked it. Get another land out of the deck. Oh, wait. I can't. Never mind. I Yeah, it, it would have enter tapped. I would have exposed Paradise Druid to Shock. Questing Beast is just so aggressive. That card's so aggressive. Does... Do we... Do we get to respond to that? That's not a trigger. No, that's not a trigger. We don't get to respond, do we? Hmm. Yeah, we don't get to we don't get to respond and adapt. Yeah, the Great Henge gives it a trigger. Stop. Crab people. Boom. One deck has the Great Henge, one deck doesn't. We'll take the Great Henge on our side. Yeah, Grum Grum did awesome there. Grum, you know, drew us a you know, drew us a couple of cards and everything and um yeah, Grum Gully was awesome there with Girl Chamber Guardian. <laughs> yeah, the Great Henge is busted. It really is. Hey, a wristband with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, wristband. Everybody get some hype votes in for our new sub. Matt gets a sub number eight on the day. So we are two subs away from our sub goal. So if you're here enjoying the stream and would like to help show your support, please consider hitting the subscribe button. 
I just need two more subs by the end of the night to hit that sub goal. What the sub goals do is uh, we count them up, and whenever we hit 20 total, uh, I do a 12-hour stream. We've hit four since our last 12-hour stream currently. Don't shock my druid. Oh, I should have played Once Upon a Time first. I was... Sorry, I was thinking... Hey, there you go. Pro Dede. <laughs> That's a gold username. Thanks, Pro Dede. Um, I just... I was like, alright, we're gonna... I was thinking in my mind, like, alright, we're gonna Once Upon a Time and find a two-mana mana creature. You're like, you know, something to play on turn two. And then we drew the thing to play on turn two. And I was like, ooh, we get to play something on turn two. And I just, you know, played the incubation druid. And right right as I was playing it, I was like, no, wait. Oh, well. All right, we just need one more subscriber there. Okay. I can ditch. We can ditch once upon a time if we want. I think I'm going to. I think we're going to cycle it. Because I want to find Vivian and the Great Henge. Particularly the Great Henge. Nice. Glad the Yara's Citadel deck is doing well. I will take those. I will take those very much. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing the Yara Citadel deck yesterday. <laughs> Thanks, Leto. Get out of here, Drake. What do you think this is, a Raptors game? Looks like we got some beasts to follow this up with. <laughs> yeah, Gruel Smash. This card's nice. Except for when your opponent plays Oko and turns it into a 3 3. Then, then it's not cool. Awesome. Ayara Siddle gave you an impressive comeback win against Cavalcade with. Uh, the Tor Torbran and Chandra, awesome. Wookie pants, getting us to that sub goal. Thank you so much, there, Wookie pants. <laughs> Wookie pants. Boom. Um, I don't really need to activate Cavalier Flame. Let's play this thing. Update our sub goal. Ten. So here's the question: Simic Henge or Gruel Henge? Um, both are pretty good. Both are pretty good. You know, Simic, of course. You're probably going like Cavalier Thorn, ramping up to it. Crasis, that kind of stuff. Yeah, somebody in, in chat here the other day was saying that they got to Phoenix turn one. Which, you know, it's possible with the, the card that filters your mana, and then this thing, and then Phoenix. <laughs> but can Simic Henge ambush you? There's no ambushes in Simic Henge. 
Uh, let's see. Yep, our deck's perfect. Deck is perfect. No sideboarding necessary. All right, here we go. More smash. Do you think a Layla from the Brawl Precons is going to see any standard play? I think that's that's the Esper. Uh, Gruel. Or sorry, that's the Esper uh, Brawl card, right? I think I have played against that in standard, and it looked... Okay, like I have I have played against it in standard. So answer yes. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think so. Um any like you know like top tier standard play, maybe not. But Alayla's are forty dollars. That's so many dollars. Like I, you know, I I like a good two for one, but a 40 for one, whew, that is, that's a little much even for me. Hmm, I hope they don't have shock. This could be really bad. Speaking of two for ones, we could get two for one if I try to growth chamber guardian and then kill this thing. I kind of feel like if they would have had a shock, they would have killed the druid though. Yeah, no shock. We know it's No Shock November, of course. All right, so we got our, our other Growth Chamber Guardian. Calling my Incubation Druid. Now that's just rude. I wanted to play Cavalier Flames. Um... I actually am just going to pass here. Because <clears throat> if I play the Growth Chamber Guardian, then it can die uh, to like an, another removal spell before we get to get any value from it. And we could play Incubation Druid, but it's not... You know, it just, it just doesn't do very much. I would rather just discard Incubation Druid to the Cavalier. So we still get to... Let's go get a land out of the deck. And we're going to cycle away this Incubation Druid. What? Disdainful Stroke. Okay, maybe we're not actually going to cycle that away.
All right, here we go. Sack for five. Five guys, burgers, and questing beasts. That doesn't have quite a ring to it. All right, all right. I could have been, I could have been, could have been just a little hasty on that ambush. They haven't had shock this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, shock does not is not um a, yeah, it's it's been underwhelming. For sure. Creatures are just big these days. All right, once upon a time, we looked through our library. So I would like to get Fabled Passage. I, I mean, I guess I just take the creature. It's not really even a good creature, but I was going to say that as far as like the other lands go, Fabled Passage would be the land that I'd want to get the, the most. Um, but I didn't really want to shuffle all those bad cards back. Alright, so two lava coils used over there. <laughs> My opponent has some radical ideas. They have some radical ideas. Well, that's awesome. We can just put it back down to the bottom and go grab it again. Well, that's convenient. The one problem about making a bunch of 3 threes is, is if they play a Crackling Drake, I can't get through. So that is, the, that is a problem with playing a bunch of 3 threes. Good thing, though, is that they don't have Crackling Drake. So they must have liked both cards in hand. You know, like, they're not using these radical ideas. Ah, saving them for Phoenix. That's the other problem with 3-3s three is Phoenix trades with 3-3s. Three or, you know, if I if we don't have the Grum Goalie, we get to adapt. These things are 4-4s four and 3-5s. Um, they do not get Phoenixed. Why is this radical idea over here and those are over here? Is there a difference? Wow, 
Why are those separated? Between the country. Hmm. Oh, because... I don't know. No, you can only adapt if it has one key. If it has zero counters, it's the only time you can adapt. Ugh, they suddenly have shock. They hadn't had shock that whole time. Uh, so they found it last turn with their wheel spinning. I, I don't know why this one's over here and this one's not. But this one, this should be in their exile. So, are, like, are these in exile? They shouldn't be. They should all just be in the graveyard, right? Yeah, they're all in the graveyard. Right, so that's another problem with being three power. And three toughnesses. Pyromancer. Alright, so playing these things after Grum Goalie was just a bad idea. Where's our Great Henge? I would like one the Great Henge, please. I would like one the Great Henge. We haven't seen one yet. We've gone through 24 cards. I'm trading with the merchant. Trading with the merchant so they don't get to uh, sit there and loot with the, the merchant. And I'm going to be keeping all my lands in hand. Honestly, maybe should have kept these things in hand too. I like, probably should have just kept Grumgully in hand. Because uh, if we draw a Cavalier of, of Flame to just discard it. We can play this thing. Yeah, I like playing the Paradise Druid that can make sure that the 2-2 the two -two on the ground doesn't uh, kill us. But I think I should have kept Grum Goalie in hand. Because even, even if we would have just drawn like the Great Henge, we could play that, then Grum Goalie. I'm sure they just drew that off of the card. I'm sure they didn't just play that afterwards. But yeah, so that, that will kill the questing beast. It's just playing Merchant of the Veil, activating Merchant at the very least. Or yeah, doing that.
Yay. Questing beast. Whew, that one was starting to slip away. Good thing that card's a beast. All right, 2-0. I like it better when we draw the Great Henge. That's why we got three of them in there. I like it better when we draw one of those in the first half of our deck. Yeah, Questing Beast is pretty busted. Okay, we need to draw a couple more lands. But as y'all know, I really like Vivian. Hmm. This whole not drawing land things is not going so well for me, though. I don't like it. I don't like this one bit. Sometimes you just don't draw the lands. I, I don't regret keeping my hand. I don't regret the keep. I would keep this hand again, but we just didn't draw any lands. Well, that's just... Very lethal. It's not a bad one drop over there. It's not a bad one. Um... I don't think I want Flame Sweep. Yeah, we're going to play the Giant. I want to play Veil of Summer also. So they're going to have, um, you know, of course they're going to be playing the Knights. Then they'll have Noxious Grasps. They have Legion's End. I like Veil of Summer in this matchup. Or like in these kind of matchups. Just too powerful of a card. Oh, I should have played Castle. Hmm. Should have played Turn 1 Castle. <clears throat> Things entering tapped.
Now I don't get to play Spellbreaker. Awkward not having more lands again. Yay. They did not kill the correct card. Ugh, we did not draw a land though. I absolutely want um want Vivian protected with Veil vale Summer. So I want to be able to like play a land, preferably like a. All right, we'll just use this here. To say preferably a green land. Oh, love it. Nature will take back what rightfully belongs to it. We're fit enough to survive. That works. Bill Summer is just busted. Busted. So good. I don't think they're going to just sideboard out the murderous riders. You know, like try to play around Veil of Summer in that way. I don't I don't think they do that. Yeah, 4 mana Vivian is is awesome. It's really good. Really good. All right, Louise. Thanks to the deck here. You can you can finish watching it over on YouTube later on. Yep, there you go. Cool. Have a have a good night. Ooh. It's two tap lands. I mean I like Paradise Druid and then I like these things. And I really like, you know, Cavalier and Henge, of course. We're on the draw. Let's just draw an untap land. Come on, Deck, you can do it. Not a tap land. Untap land. You know, we play Paradise, then we can go, like, with the two mana, we can ambush the knight with the Paradise Druid, which is, like, Paradise and, and Ambush, like, you know, having, like, the hex proof works really well. But we need to draw a land here. Oh, gosh. That hurts. That really hurts. The cost of playing Fabled Passage. Whoa, they did not take Paradise Druid. Okay. I'm not sure why they did not take Paradise Druid, to be honest. Rotting Regisaur. How am I supposed to beat that card? Play the land they know about. So you know they they probably have removal for Cavalier now. Uh. 
Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Well, good news is they only have one black mana as far as black mana for a murderous rider to try to kill the cavalier. Wow, yeah, that's that's insane. That could be the best robber of the rich I've ever seen. That's got to be the best robber of the rich I've ever seen. Rankle. Alright, so we're going to have to try to outgrind a Great Henge. We're going to start by killing this thing. When we get to play our own Great Henge next turn, you know, uh, assuming Bone Crusher Giant survives, we get to play our own and then Growth Chamber Guardian. It looks like they're just kind of flooding out over here. That could be a double black card. Also. I mean, we're looking just fine right now. Yes, please. Did it. Our opponent bricked for like two or three turns in a row there. And we did not. After playing our Cavalier and trading with the Rotting Regisaur. I mean, that was all... If they just drill bit... Like, they just took the... They took the complete wrong card with taking Vela Summer. They didn't even have any removal that... Like, Vela Summer never did anything. If they would have just taken Paradise Druid, they would have won that easily. We would have been super dead if they would have taken Paradise Druid. <laughs> Robin Hood stealing Stonehenge is seriously the greatest heist of the century. <laughs> that is. Robin Hood stole st Stonehenge. <laughs> I just, re yeah, I didn't even really think of the Great Henge as Stonehenge. But I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. We're... Okay, we're 3-0. Let's win these last two as well. You gonna help out here, Grum Gully? Yeah, yeah, Grum Gully, you helping. 
you help him. I played Ilharg in my uh, Grixis Reanimate deck yesterday. We didn't do super well with the deck, but uh, that's because there's a separate flaw in the deck. Um, you know, mixing too many things together. But I'm gonna keep, you know, I'm keeping Ilharg in there, and I, I liked it in that deck. But yeah, basically right now, like Ilharg, you know, gets bounced by to like is really bad against the three mana walkers, which is why it doesn't see too much play. Between getting bounced by Teferi, because uh, it doesn't have any kind of ETB effect, so it's just so slow there, uh, to Oko turning it into a 3-3. Like, that's also pretty rough. Giant killer. Why why do we gotta be killing giants? We don't need no giants killed. Yeah, the two Ds means that it's a donation deck. So, so they're viewer submitted lists um, that viewers donated for. I have to find like some removal or something like these fairy godmothers are going to be tough. Well, I like the castle. It allows me to castle allows me to um, allows me to have the paradise druid attack in. But I guess their creatures are going to be tapped most likely. I guess they have to have. I guess they have to have March of the Multitudes. Yeah, Borderland Ranger. I know. I know, I know. I've played against this deck multiple times. I guess they have to have March of the Multitudes. I shouldn't have gone to attack so fast.
I'm just trying to think of how I'm going to survive this now, and I don't know if I can. I mean, I got to find Domri's ambush, I guess. I had to force them to use it. So, yeah, I was, I was determining whether or not to attack with the Paradise Druid, but this forces them to use it. So we need to find... We need to draw Domri's Ambush or Vivian. Ambush. One, two. Spellbreaker has four counters on it. <laughs> All right, so definitely flame sweep in. I'm not sure if I'm we're if we're going bone crushing. Are we bone crushing? I think we're just sweeping. And then, of course, Flame Sweep kills Incubation Druid. Maybe just take out the Incubation Druids and we'll go one giant. All right, here we go. Yeah, all the, yeah, the adventure cards. The I I agree. The adventure cards have really really good flavor. I mean, same thing. Like you know, I was you know really noticing that like playing the Jund Adventures deck earlier. Also, the yeah the adventure cards have a lot of really good flavor. I like like the Innkeeper and you know the Love Struck Beast and there there's a lot of really good flavor in the adventure cards. I agree. I feel like I need to kill Innkeeper. Then we're going to be taking a lot of damage, though. But Giant Killer is also problematic. I don't think I'm winning this game, you know, like with just, you know, Growth Chamber Guardians and a Grum Goalie. Like, I don't, I don't think we're winning this game. Here. All right. 
So they got March of the Multitudes. Definitely want to fetch a land out of the deck. Just gonna play Grum Gully. Oh, Giant Killer is the biggest flavor win for you? Yeah, that's a good one. Just a, it's a really strong card. I gave it, I definitely gave this card a good rating, like when we talked about it in the in the set review. Oh, this is a really underrated card. Doesn't take much for one drops to be good, and that's a one drop that can do a whole lot. Maybe I should just mulligan my hand if it's just Growth Chamber Guardian, Grum Goalie, and a Domri's ambush. And we did only we only drew lands. Talk about the Iowa game on Discord tomorrow. Yeah, I can do that. I don't... I don't know. I'm not usually one that... I usually like to just watch the game. I don't usually like doing other things and everything during the game. I usually like just watching, though. Yeah, this is our, our last shot for a 5-0 Friday. Um, I'm worried about this matchup. I'm worried about March of the Multitudes and Tristani. Those cards are very good. Yeah, I think I think somebody was asking just earlier, like, what does that what does the term net decker mean? Not that there's anything wrong with it, because there's definitely not anything wrong with that. I think somebody was just asking what that what that term meant. Paradise Druid. I probably would have just played the Once Upon a Time. I don't... So, like, my opponent just didn't play a land, right? Or no, were they on the... No, they were on the draw, so never mind. They, did, they didn't miss a land drop. I was going to say, if they missed a land drop, they should have just Once Upon a Time during their turn. Maybe they did miss a land drop. Who knows? Hmm. There's so many questing beasts. I'm just taking land. I haven't no, I haven't played Mardu Knight. Um, I'm not sure if like the mana is works for that. I've tried Orzov Knights and I, I liked we didn't have like the most wins, but I liked the deck. Um, I've heard of other you know, some people in chat have talked about how they've been doing pretty well with 
Boros knights also. Kind of looking for the Great Henge. Um, I could see discarding the Growth Chamber Guardian being wrong because I can just get a bunch more Growth Chamber Guardians. But I wanted to dig for the Great Henge. Vivian. My opponent looks to be in the driver's seat here. Just so many cards in hand, and because they don't have very much mana, but they don't need you don't need mana whenever you have convoke spells. So like with them playing, you know, venerate Luxodons and and march of the multitudes and all that kind of stuff, they just don't need mana. How how am I supposed to? Yeah, I can't kill their innkeeper. Now I can. All right. <laughs> okay, come here. Yeah, you're in the way. I can't see the screen. Come here. Thank you. Just stay right here. Could still play a Convoke spell. Nope, no Convoke spell. Looks like they have March of the Multitudes, though. To make a bunch of 1-1s. One one Basically, March of the Multitudes is just Fog, Gain 3 Life. So that's not too bad for me. Obviously, we could really use a Vivian, give these things Trample. If I target Giant, I take 2 damage. It's whoever, whenever it comes to the target of a spell, it deals 2 damage to that spell's controller. So I would take 2 damage if I would target Bone Crusher Giants.
It's definitely possible I should have killed the giant killer. But I mean, giant giant killer to tap stuff, you know, does cost two mana, and they're kind of stuck on mana. <laughs> Factory with the call there, saying this is where we're going to top deck the Great Henge and not have any... Anything to do with the mana. I have to be a little worried about this intruder. The intruder can kill the Great Henge. I'm going to leave the Paradise Druid back to block it. Yesterday. So now any any creature would be a great draw. All right, so just trading there. That's good for me. Just getting <clears throat> getting creatures off the battlefield against a deck that's trying to go wide like this. Is good. Come on, creature, creature, Vivian. Ugh. The only thing we can't draw is a land. Anything else would be a good draw. Literally anything else. So three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, anything else in our deck's good. Um, I don't want to trade Cavalier Flame away. Yeah, there. <clears throat> well, they are very far ahead of now. Okay, I can't see the screen when you sit there. Keeping the land in hand, because if we draw, keeping this land in hand, because if we drew Cavalier of Flame, we'd be able to loot it away. All right, that'll do. Now we're going. With the arc bow at my side, I can't lose a fight. We're gonna tear you apart. 
I only have. I guess there's only one more Cavalier of Flame in the deck. I guess I should just get land out. Yeah, I'll probably play Once Upon a Time in Gruel. You know, it's it helps you helps fix your mana. Helps you find like you know like that last questing beast or anything like that. So they're gonna go wide with March of the Multitudes here. Spellbreaker is just awesome. Oh man, we have Flame Sweep. Yeah, I like loading up on Spellbreaker because it has Hexproof. They can't tap it with the Giant Killer. My, my. Cavalier kills the opponent. Wrong. It does a very good job killing the opponent. It filters through extra lands. It allows us to play the Great Henge. Um, the Great Henge, usually we have extra mana. And so giving, like giving all of our creatures plus one, plus zero in haste is like a big deal. So they can make five creatures with March. I got four blockers to help protect Vivian. No, you break even at 2-2 two, two in the event. So you have to be 2-1 and one and then lose to break to break even to break even gold wise you get you get uh card rewards and stuff too No, 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 no. Ugh. I didn't hit the full, whole, full control fast enough. I wanted to just, I wanted to kind of quickly go to blockers first. But yeah. Or go to attackers first. But yeah, I wanted to turn my creature sideways and then flame sweep. But we we're still gonna be fine. It didn't really matter what they did because we'd still flame sweep. Should should still be able to win with the spellbreaker trample anyway. So, you know, sure they could block all the other creatures. All right, four zero. Um, I don't. Ember cleave would work like maybe. I mean, it's it's good like. Like, whenever we're already, like, winning and attacking and stuff, then, you know, Ember Cleave makes that even better. It's hard to have, like, Ember Cleave and the Great Henge in the deck together. They kind of take the same slot as, like, your, your powerful endgame card. 
Yeah, we got final. Um, we got final boss time here. We're gonna go ahead and just just stay with like the same. Um, I'm gonna just keep the playlist. I don't know. We switched over to final boss playlist earlier, and proceeded to lose both of our matches when we were 4-0 with Orzhov value and, and feeling good with that deck. So we're gonna go ahead and just um, just stay here. Alright, go ahead and Do I want Highlands? No. Okay, so we have uh, a 4-4 four, four Growth Chamber Guardian would make the Great Henge cost 5 mana. So we wouldn't be able to play the Great Henge the very next turn still. Hmm. We're not really speeding anything up by playing Paradise Druid instead. Yeah, Risen Reef. Is that... Risen Reef's not, not a three-mana walker, but kind of close. We got an old school deck here, Risen Reef. How are we still drawing so many lands? We need to keep creatures for after the Great Henge. We go Paradise Druid. Hawkeye. So many lands, Hawkeye. So many lands. So yeah, Cavalier of Flame would be really nice to find. We get to turn all these lands into new cards if we get a Cavalier Flame. Okay, just like, don't bother me. I'm going to sit right here in front of the screen and can't do anything about it. Twenty-one to nine. All right. 
Alright, get another land out of the deck. We don't want to draw lands. can only draw lands though. All right, questing beast. That's a good one. So they have to block the growth chamber guardian otherwise they're dead. I mean, you might as well double block instead of just trump with a 1-1, one, one, right? Might as well just have your 2-2 two, two trade with it. With the Krasis. So 6, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've gone through 13 lands. So there's only 11 lands left. Boom. The Great Henge getting it done. Opponent's hand was pretty slow. Yeah, I think Grum Goalie is better than Rhythm of the Wild. Um, especially when you're playing the Great Henge, because, you know, it is a creature also. So, have it, you know, it being a creature is nice. Um, that's, that's really, like, the main thing there. I think we just want to try to do a lot of damage fast. Like, I think... Like, I don't think we sideboard, right? Like, Flame Sweep doesn't kill Nissa lands. Like, Oko is just going to be really hard to beat. I could play Ceratops. Ceratops gets, doesn't get Oko'd. Let's try it. Yeah, I think Grumgoli is any creature. So yeah, yeah, Grumgoli. Uh, yeah, tokens get additional one-one counters. So yeah, if you play Grumgoli and then you play like uh, three mana Chandra and make two haste elementals, those would be two two elementals with Grumgoli on um, on the battlefield. Um, so like Grumgoli works very well with um, Cranko, for example, is there. Yeah, so yeah, Cranko. You know, yeah, Grumgoli gives an extra counter to Cranko first. Okay, so what do we have? So we have Mountain Forest over there. So I have four lands. Okay, I really wish you would just pick some other place to lay down. Can you just lay down on the other side of the keyboard? Come here. Just always want to lay down, right? Yeah, you know, like you know, my monitor. Yeah, you know, like so he lays down right in front of the monitor, so he covers up exactly like where the hand is. I'll shear the wool from your eyes. And it's not poison. This puts Oko down to two loyalty. 
So if I if I just let the two damage happen, they go to four, and then I could play Grum Gully. Um, no, Hawkeye never really chews through the pen. He doesn't actually really chew it. Um, so then then Oko's at four. I play Grum Gully. They could tick up. They could go plus two. Oko goes back up to six, and then my questing beast doesn't kill Oko. <clears throat> when we're at two here. Questing Beast is probably I killing Oko. Change your ways. They have to double chump block to keep Oko alive. This is my oh, today. go. I would not mind drawing a land. They're playing white? Did I? I didn't even realize they were playing white. Do. I wanted that triple red. I think I'm just not going to ditch anything. Like, maybe I... So I can go... I guess Cavalier, Growth Chamber, Guardian, Haste next turn. So Cav yeah, I can go Cavalier plus Growth Chamber, Guardian plus Haste next turn. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land shall conquer you. There we go. They're scooping it up. They could have survived here this turn. It wasn't lethal, but I guess they just didn't want to fight through it. As far as I know, it wasn't lethal. GG's. We got the 5 0 on Friday. 5 0 Friday. We got there. So, Gruel Henge. This is definitely the best performing Gruel deck that I've played so far. Um, 
because like because of these two cards, because of Cavalier of Flame and the Great Henge, that's that's kind of what my the Gruel decks that I've been playing. That's like what they've missed at the top end. They've kind of you know petered out and haven't been able to really um, have enough power to to uh, you know win the late games. And the Great Henge certainly does that. And the Cavalier of Flames were awesome at putting a lot of damage on the opponents. Um, you know, it's a it's a huge creature. You know, we got to trade with other big creatures. The the haste thing is really nice. But then just like that discard, then draw. You know, like there's a lot of hands like where I discarded three or four cards, drew, drew no more cards. You know, like went and found the Great Henge, went and found Vivian, and everything like that. Um, so yeah, this deck worked really well. Uh, Incubation Druid did work well, like with you know getting us the extra mana um, with the one one counter stuff with Grum Gully. It, it worked well. I liked um, just having it as a, as another turn you know you don't always want to play growth chamber guard on turn two so having eight uh two mana things that we can play to start ramping us um yeah everything worked went well in the main deck really liked it sideboard i didn't like so much um i don't like i don't really like bone crusher giant that much as like a sideboard removal spell as we talked about like the two damage isn't very much and so like basically all of our removal only does two damage i don't like that um I think I'd rather have, like, one, I want a fourth Domri's Ambush, because Domri's Ambush is incredible. Yeah, yeah, I barely sideboarded, because, um, because, like, I just didn't need to, uh, didn't, you know, didn't really need to. Uh, Leyline of Combustion, I think, is kind of unplayable. I don't, I don't like Leyline of Combustion whatsoever. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's really useful against any deck at all, to be honest. Um, so like that like that's a card that I wasn't really gonna bring in ever against anything. So like that's just not a, a card that needs to be in the deck. I I guess if you want to play something against removal heavy deck, like I want more card advantage. We could play more Vivians. Um, for example, like three mana Vivian could play four mana Domri, could play Nissa. Um, there's a lot of things you know you can play card advantage wise. Uh, you know with green and red, there's a lot of card advantage that you can play instead of playing Leyline of Combustion. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of it. Like, the, I think the ley line should be replaced, and then probably Bone Crusher Giant, maybe at least like one of the Bone Crusher Giant. Like, it is nice that it's the creature though. Also, like we, you know, like we we did have some success with this card. I can't, you know, like this card really helped us win. Like, it was like a two mana removal for um, for like the Edgewall Innkeeper, and then we played it later, um, and you know, it was like bigger with Grum Goalie and stuff. Like it, it did. It was it was a good card for us, but I. I think that I would like a fourth Domri's Ambush because that card is so strong. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that's Gruel Henge. Main deck worked really well. I think the Cyborg Ley Lines can, can certainly go. And then maybe, um, you know, maybe something else there. But, um, you know, so like if, if you have Cyborg cards uh, that you really want to play, you know, you definitely take out the Ley Lines there. Uh, and then, you know, uh, find something else but as you saw during those games i didn't sideboard too much you don't want to take out too many creatures you know with the great henge you want to be playing a lot of creatures and that's the good part about bone crusher giant is it's still a removal spell that's a creature um so you know like that's that's something to you know you kind of have to uh weigh and everything there i i don't know i don't like rhythm of the wild i mean i guess like yes rhythm of the wild is good against simic flash i guess if they if you resolve rhythm of the wild um i would rather have three mana domri um three mana domri also your creatures don't get countered i mean i guess they do get to attack three mana domri though but they can also just bounce rhythm of the wild i don't, I don't like i don't want rhythm of the wild at all um yeah we went 5-0 talking yeah anyway uh, there we go. So if you're watching the, the video later on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And please let me know in the comments, what do you want to do in the sideboard here? You know, I liked the main deck here. What do you want to do for the sideboard? Um, you know, let me know in the comments there. Uh, you know, like, what do you want to replace Leyline with? You know, is there, is there something that, that the deck's missing? Is there something against, like, Golos Field of the Dead that it needs, that the deck needs to have? Um, you know, anything else? Um, but yeah, even, even against, like, the counter... If, if you really want a card against Simic Flash, Veil of Summer is the best card. So I would just put a fourth Veil of Summer in the sideboard if you want help against Simic Flash. Like, just, yeah, Veil of Summer needs to be a four of before you do anything else. Um, no, like, the mana really didn't hurt. Yeah, we have Gre 
triple green, triple red, but Paradise Druid and Incubation Druid helped a lot for that. You know, like these these things helped once upon a time fixed our mana too. Um, our our mana was actually just fine all the time. Like we we had triple green, triple red, basically every game. So yeah, it actually it actually, um, yeah, it actually didn't. It actually worked out pretty well. Didn't do too bad. All right, so there we go. That's Gruel Henge. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.